Hello, congratulations. Congratulations times two, this and Wednesday. It's like- oh, one thank you so one. much. I mean it. Um, my first question is actually about both projects because I was reading about how this and Wednesday came your way via personal phone calls from Jerry and Tim. And, you know, they're two completely different types of creators, but I'm wondering if there's a constant between them that signals to you that no matter what project they're working on, you have to sign up and work with them. Yeah, there is a bit of that. There is a bit of that. I was always like, mm, I wish I was in a Jerry Bruckheimer movie. Mm, I wish I was in a Jerry Bruckheimer. And I was like, hmm. I wish I was in a Tim Burton. And then all of a sudden, you know, those, 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 you know, chances come your way, you know, and I know I, I'm always starstruck, you know, I never, I'm never kind of like, whatever. I'm always like really excited when people that I love their work, you know, think of me about for something. The same thing happened with Steven Soderbergh. I did three movies with Steven Soderbergh. And every time he calls up, it was like, Oh, thank you. Thank you. I just love working with you. And, What's great about it is that it's never it's never disappointed me. You know, it's nothing worse than really admiring people. And then you meet them and go, oh, God, I wish it really. <laughs> but and it's never really happened to me. But that would be awful if it did. But um, not the, the double whammy with with Jerry Bruckheimer was that I was also a fan of this particular franchise, you know, that he, that he has, they, many that he has, but um, this particular show of uh, movies were, uh, were very, I love them. And they read up my alley history. I'm a complete history fanatic uh, as are my children. Um, and so the whole kind of road, the kind of like adventure, the kind of, you know, there's an Indiana Jones quality to this show too, I have to say, you know, that's, um, and then also getting to play the not so nice character in, in it all. It's, it's as an actor, it's just fun to do that because, you know, you keep it all in, in reality, but you're able to kind of manip manipulate a little bit more, you know, than you would if you're just playing a good old goody two shoes, you know. I am so. really enjoying that quality of Billy thus far. I, I love how she does feel like the quintessential action adventure villain that we can have fun watching being evil. But then at the same time, you're adding just enough nuance and more vulnerable moments to still make us feel like she's a real person. So what was oh, it like finding you. that right balance? I think I think that's thank you so much, but because, because that is important because it's um you know not people are usually bad for a reason you know and it's usually through insecurity fragility or some something very traumatic that has made them that way because it's really easy it's much it's easier and it's much easier to be nice you know but but she's a little a little dark and i think it's you know i'm not going to give too much away because as, as the story unfolds in in our series you kind of get a glimpse of why she's like that and why this treasure is so important to her, um, which makes sense. Um, so she, the right, the whips, we call them, the writers of the, the original movies and of our show, um, created really great characters, not for me, but for everybody. Um, they didn't decide, oh, 20 years on, what about National Treasure? Let's just make an old TV show about that. They really took the the beauty and the love and, you know, and the, and the greatness of that, of those two movies and really rooted it with some really great characters of today of a young generation that are on the hunt for treasure, or even if they never thought about looking for treasure are really into it. Escape rooms and treasure hunting. How cool is that? And I, I think it's a generational thing, you know, and we, we all uh, would love to find, like I watch the antiques road show all the time. You know, I want to be that person who found his grandmother's suitcase in the attic and inside was the missing documentation of the Magna Carta. You know, <laughs> that's, I want I want to be that person. And so I have my kind of fix doing this this show of mm, it could happen. I could I find get it. it. I watch TikTok videos of people like finding like secret rooms in their homes and like finding safes in there. I'm like, why doesn't that happen to me? Get in tone. It's, it's, it's worth $20 million. You know, it's like, and then they go, I'll never sell it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs>
<laughs> They're kicking me out of here. Thank you so much. And again, congratulations times two. You are keeping me very, very happy at the end of this year. <laughs> Thank you so much.